Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Unfiltered. Pastor David, always a welcome. Thank you. Good to see you. Thank you. <laughs> I want to thank you guys for tuning in uh, to watch this and join us. Uh, Pastor, I wanted to tease out a, your message that you'll be teaching for Sunday in Acts chapter 12. Well, as Herod reaches out his hand to begin to per or persecuting the church. Can you give us some some insights on that? You know, I'm, I'm preparing the study right now as we were just speaking before we we started recording. And yeah, um, um, when you begin to look at the book of Acts, you see that from the very, very beginning, um, chapter one and all, all the way for several chapters, you see the Lord moving in wonderful ways. You know, God is moving and all. Peter has uh, preached the Pentecost sermon. People have been um, saved. Uh, places uh, that were uh, uh, traveled to were beginning to have a, um, an explosion of uh, salvations. I was sharing recently that Jesus had said, you'll receive power and you're going to be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and other most parts of the earth. So we see that. And you see how that um, on Pentecost Sunday, uh, Peter preaches a message, people get saved, the church is birthed. Uh, then you begin to see the, um, the uh, mounting rejection, the Sadducees, uh, arrest uh, the disciples mm -hmm. for for preaching the gospel. They say, you're bringing this man's blood upon our head. We are upset that you're blaming us for the death of uh, whom you refer to as Messiah. So you see all this kind of thing taking place. And yet, in the midst of that, it's almost subtle, but you start seeing that persecution begins to grow, grows even more. It speaks of it being uh, inflamed uh, at, with the... Uh, with the efforts of uh, Saul of Tarsus. And then uh, revival continues, not so much revival, but evangelism and church continues to spread. You see Ethiopian eunuch get saved and tradition holds that he went back to, to his country and preached the gospel there. And you see um, um, you know, Stephen uh, being used in, in Antioch, Syria. And all of that's taking place to say this, so you have good and you have resistance. You have Jesus' words where he said, uh, the time's coming when those who kills you, the one who kills you will think he's doing service unto God. Well, here's Herod in chapter 12. And Herod um, is, a, uh, is a man who is a, a mixture of uh, non-Jew and Jewish. And um, Herod has been given a certain amount of authority in the north. And he reaches out his hand and he begins to harass the church. And more than likely, the harassment coming from the king, Herod, from the north, is occurring in Jerusalem. More than likely, that's where it's taking place. But seeing that it pleased the Sadducees, those who were rulers, he reached out and you know, he had, first he had killed James with the sword, and then he reaches out to persecute the apostle Peter. And so... You see governmental persecution under a religious guise, which is interesting. And um, I think we see that kind of thing now in, in, in our day. It, it's never stopped. But you'll see uh, governmental intrusion into the rights of and the um, religious freedoms of, of Christians. Um, we're told that we don't have a right to raise our own children now. We're told that if if somebody is um, teaching their children what male and female is and there's a divorce and all, that there can be a, a disruption of relationship between the children and the parent if, the, if, they, if there is a desire on the part of one of the parents to, to cause that problem. It, it, it's just, it, what we're seeing is a, a stealing of the, of the minds of the children, John, and we're seeing intrusions in the church, into uh, rather the uh, the government into church life, telling us, you know, when to meet, how to meet, that we can't conduct funerals, that we can't have weddings, and they they got their slippery little hands into the life of the church, and uh, it can be done under this what we're only doing you good, mm -hmm. that kind of that guys, and then you have people of various religious persuasions who will say that if you don't um, abide by what the government is ruling as it pertains to your church and the opening of your church and your worship of your church, 
then you do have religious people who will oppose you for actually exercising your religious freedoms. And so we'll be looking at some, some of that kind of thing this upcoming Sunday. Um, and, uh, you know, we need to always remember that God hasn't given the government the authority to govern our children. God gave to us that responsibility. And when we allow intrusions into our our Christian faith and our raising of our children, and I'm not speaking about some of the exceptional weird cultic ways mm -hmm. that people think of us. I'm speaking about the the average evangelical Christian who wants to do devotions with his children and make sure that they go to church on Sunday. Uh, when you see the, the government beginning to intrude in that, and, and there are those who will take that in a positive light, well, you're seeing something similar that took place back then, oh. except for the except for the death. Right. You know, they beheaded James and they go after the Apostle Peter, but it's still a, a desire to stop the church from being the church. And we see it all the way, again, as you mentioned, from Acts. All the way and, it's, it. uh, and this is where we stay true to God's word. Amen. So, well, Pastor David, thank you for sharing on that. And do want to invite you guys to come join us on Sunday. Actually, tonight we have service at 7, actually, yesterday. Sunday. <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> I got my days mixed up. We'll see you on Sunday, 8.30 and 10.45 as... Pastor David just mentioned we'll be going through Acts chapter 12. Great opportunity to invite your friends and family. We look forward to seeing you. God bless you. Amen.